Hello foodies, my name is Blue Arouse and I'm a Yelp community manager. A major part of my job is going around to local businesses and writing reviews about those places to let the world know about all the great local finds. I don't know if my mouth is big enough for this. No, no. We're gonna be giving you an authentic taste of Greater Fort Lauderdale. From real deal Cuban fare to the freshest seafood, tacos to pizza, Asian fusion, craft cocktails to craft beer, we're gonna be featuring it all. I'm here to discover the hidden gems in town that you might not have heard about. You're watching Crave, Greater Fort Lauderdale's brand new foodie series. Hello foodies, welcome back to another episode of Crave GFL. Today we're in Hollywood, Florida at the beautiful Diplomat Beach Resort. We're checking out one of their premier restaurants, Point Royal. It's brought to you by celebrity chef, or should I say iron chef, Jeffrey Zakarian. Point Royal features approachable American cuisine, a lively raw bar, and cocktails made with local flavor. We're going inside to meet Jeffrey Zakarian himself and try some of his culinary creations. Let's take a bite. Hey, Blue. Hey, how are you, Jeffrey? Great to have you here. Thank Welcome. you for having Sit me. Sit down, have a drink. All right. A little hurricane crush, and I'm having a rosé. Rosé? I did hear that you were a fan of rosé, yeah? I'm a big fan of rosé, but I'm a fan of rosé all the time, not just in the summer. Rosé all day, yeah? Rosé all day, why not? Um, so thank you again for having me. My pleasure. Um, how would you describe Point Royal? Um, <clears throat> I, I, would, I would tell you that it's a very clean, smart, garden-like restaurant that serves coastal Italian food with a big emphasis on seafood. That's what I would sum it up as. But it's a bit more than that because we do have a few other dishes on the menu, but that's sort of where our, our uh, wheelhouse is. And uh, you know, the look down here was sort of like Cuba meets the south of France with, okay. in, in Florida. Yeah. So you are uh, an Iron Chef. Yes. Uh, so for folks that might not understand the prestige behind that, can you tell us a little bit about Iron Chef? Uh, well, Iron Chef is a, a show actually that originated in Japan. And uh, it, it's a very strenuous sort of um, competition show where you have one hour and a secret ingredient. You have to cook five or six very high-end dishes. And you don't know what the, dish, the ingredient is and you go up against another chef. And if you do it enough times and you win um, the competition, uh, you become an Iron Chef. There's only eight Iron Chefs in the, in the actual country. And so it's great to be one of them. And then we we compete continually when people try to knock us off our pedestal. You gotta hold your throne, yeah. You gotta hold your throne. So now that you're coming down here regularly, what is your favorite part about Hollywood, Florida? Well, this beach, have you seen this beach? Yeah, it's just a killer. Gorgeous. It's very easy to get here, but it's a great place to escape to. Yeah. Um, so I do hear that you're gonna prepare some uh, some stuff for us. Uh, yes. Should we head down to the kitchen and uh, Let's prepare go. something? Let's go. Let's hit it. All right, so we have the Florida Fresh Snapper being yes. prepared. So this is uh, a Florida Snapper right from the waters off of uh, here. And we've taken the bone out of the back. And what this does is allows us to cook a fish and you can bring it and present it whole like that, which I love. I love eating the whole fish like that because it's so much better when it's actually on the bone. So we're gonna take it, do a very simple preparation. We're gonna put it on a seasoning tray. And this is a combination, a very interesting combination of salt, pepper, Aleppo pepper, uh, some, uh, some beautiful coconut, palm sugar, some coriander, and you can smell that. Mm. It's just, just an incredible seasoning, but we're not gonna overwhelm the fish because it's about a pound and a half fish. Okay. So we're just gonna open up the uh, stomach, season it right here, outside. And then we're gonna put a little salt and pepper as well. And the key to having a great fish, grilling fish, is to be very, very exacting on how you season it. Make sure it's always seasoned really thoroughly beforehand. And then cook it simply on a very hot grill. Okay. It's gonna take about two minutes. And the way you're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to cook this, and we're gonna show. So it's a very easy for someone at home to do this. At, it's so much better to take the bone out like that. So you cook it, it cooks quicker and you don't have to fuss with bones, all right? So there we have it, now we're gonna go to the grill. So that's it, simple preparation, it. straight to the grill. That's it. So, we're at the grill, Chef George is, uh, the executive chef here is gonna help me with this grilling process, but first of all, you need a very clean grill okay. and a very hot grill, and the way a chef knows how to grill, the way a chef knows when the grill is hot enough is a very simple and non-scientific way. 
you hold your hand over it, and you cannot get to five. Okay. And that's what allows it to cook in two minutes. Yeah. So George is going to show you. So we've seasoned this. You're going to throw a little very nice olive oil on. Very little oil, okay. because what you don't want is a large flare-up. I know when you watch TV Food Network or you watch someone outside barbecuing fish and all that, and this is all these flames. It's a good shot, but it's not. That is the easy. enemy of fish, because you get a carbon flavor that you don't want. Mm. George is going to put it on very simply. He's going to lay it once, and guess what? He's not going to touch it. That's it. So that fish is now going to come off the grill itself in about a minute. Very important, there's the aesthetic. We all love those hatch grill marks, you know those things? In French, it's called quadrillage. It's like railroad tracks on top of each other. It's like you stack wood, you know? Yeah, yeah. And you get that beautiful stacking. So what George is going to do is move it slightly, counterclockwise. Now watch. Watch how it doesn't stick. Watch how it's perfectly, comes off the grill perfectly. Right? And he's just going to slide it. So now he's gone like this, he's rotated it, so you get that beautiful grill mark. And you eat with your eyes first, you right? Eat with so your that eyes. gives it the beautiful look. Now we're gonna flip the red snapper. All right, George, show him how you do it. Watch this. First of all, you're he's heat resistant, George. Okay, so you see that? That's the way you cook fish on a grill. Beautiful and, grill marks on that. Yeah, and it really is beautiful. So what he's gonna do is dress it with some watercress, some salmoriglia sauce. So what's gonna happen now is he's gonna move the fish one more time. So the other side gets that quadrillage or the crosshatch. George is going in for the uh, he's going in for the second turn on the other side. So watch how nicely it releases. One minute. Notice he has no hair in his arms. Just because they're all been burned off. What he's going to do is going to remove it to a pan that's lightly oiled and put it in the oven for about two two minutes just to like set it. Okay. And we're finished. Okay, George. So the oven's about 350, about a minute or two, just to finish it. So we, we grill it, and then when it's picked up, we throw it in the oven just for a second, just the just last second of cooking. Okay, so here's our fish. It's beautiful. We just put a little samarugio sauce, which is this garlic parsley sauce, some really good extra virgin olive oil, a squeeze of roasted lemon, and a little bit of sea salt on top. That's what you do to fish. Don't do really much more. Beautiful. Then you cover the fish. Want to have a bite? I do. Okay, let's dig in. And no, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no bone, so it should be perfect. Right. Perfect. That red snapper is swimming on my taste buds. It brown. tastes like you literally like you just caught it from the ocean. So that's that's how we cook fish. That's how we simply cook everything on a grill. No flame. A beautiful. It's almost like the ocean. Yeah. Just warm, delicately. And I have a lot of stuff at the table for you to try. So should we go back to the table? Let's do that. All right, let's go. So what an experience in the kitchen. Uh, that Florida red snapper was a delight. Um, Ready to eat? Yeah, but now we have a ton of other things. So wow. can you walk me through what sure. this, uh, so this feast is? This is our Point Real platter um, uh, with the freshest of lobster, main lobster, beautiful Gulf shrimp, crab claws. You know what these are, right? Yeah, stone crab. They're in season yeah. for another couple of months. And our uh, beautiful oysters, East and West Coast oysters. We have some Brussels sprouts with apple cider vinegar. We have our lobster mac and cheese which is very popular, I must say. And then our uh, grilled red snapper that we just made with uh, sal mariglio sauce, mm. which is basically a parsley, garlic, olive oil sauce. Very nice. Yeah, I see that you guys live up to the name here, and this is a uh, royalty almost, yeah? This is a uh, Point Royal with a royal feast. Shall we eat? Uh, let's we dive have in. Bloody Mary here. Yes, right. yes, okay. a very casual Bloody very Mary, Very casual, my little uh, oyster and some uh, stone crabs. Oh, man. Let's go. Basically everything you know he sells, it just just tastes like it just came out of the ocean. It's yeah. so fresh. Uh, lobster, which is post with a little bit of uh, mustard sauce. Shrimp, it's a little mayo. Okay. Mustard mayo, very important for both the uh, either the shrimp or the crab claws. I think it's the best way to have a crab claw, a little mustard. So let's dip the crab claw in right the in mayo. There. You said. Yes.
So all the seafood is incredible, and uh, like you said, it tastes like you just caught it out of the ocean. Uh, but we have some other stuff. These are the Brussels sprouts. Try these. They're Brussels sprouts that we we flash fry them, okay. and then we toss them in an apple cider vinegar dressing, uh, and then we top them with fresh apples. And it's really the Brussels sprout doesn't get a lot of respect, but this is a really yummy way to eat Brussels sprouts. It doesn't have that sulfur cabbagey flavor, right? Yeah. Isn't that nice with the apple and the sour and the apple adds a nice little sweet, uh, little yeah. sweetness to it and the crisp. And you feel like you're actually eating something good for you. Yeah. Before you dive into the mac and cheese, which, which is <laughs> good, mac and cheese. but maybe not good for you, but um, good for the soul, I say. Um, so what is in this mac and cheese? Beautiful homemade pappardelle we make here. A great cheese sauce, garlic breadcrumbs, and fresh lobster. And it's really a very, very yummy. Dish. You see how big those are? Look how beautiful pastas. And mm. has a great mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. It's not just like cheesy elbow pasta. Yeah, creamy, and those breadcrumbs add a really nice crunch to it too, yeah? Chef, thank you so much for having us. Everything Pleasure. has been nice to have you here. Ah, what a treat. Um, and you can come to Point Royal and check out the rotating menu. They change items on the regular, only featuring the freshest of seafoods. You can tune in to Crave GFL Wednesdays, 7 p.m. for new episodes, or check out the on-demand section for past episodes. Tune in for every drool-worthy moment. Cheers. Cheers.